My name is Rick Renner. Today I'm in the wonderful city of Jerusalem at the pool of Bethesda. That's what this is. I know you probably can't tell by looking at it today, but when Jesus came here 2,000 years ago, this was filled with water and all around the water were sick people. This is recorded in John chapter 5 where Jesus performed one of the most significant miracles of his ministry. Today I'm going to talk to you about miracles, the miracles of Jesus Christ. But when Jesus came into this place, he found a man who had been here for 38 years. That's really a chronic illness. For 38 years, this man had been waiting and believing for healing power to take root in his life. How about you? Have you been waiting for some kind of a miraculous healing touch? Or do you know someone that's been believing for healing, but it seems it just never comes? That's how this man must have felt. But on the day that Jesus walked into this place, everything changed. Jesus performed a miracle that totally changed his life. And that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. Welcome to today's program. As I told you in the introduction, today we're going to go to the Pool of Bethesda, and we're going to see a wonderful miracle that Jesus worked there in the Pool of Bethesda, which was not so far from the temple. It is amazing what Jesus did with a man who had been there for 38 years. You know, maybe you've been waiting for a long time for God to heal you. Then it's time for you to be healed. And I believe today you're going to hear what you need for you to receive your miracle. And by the way, if you need prayer, call us. We're waiting for your call. We're waiting for your contact. You can call us, send us an email, contact us on our website. We are people of prayer. And one of our greatest delights is when you contact us and we are able to put our faith together with you for God to work in your situation. And we will really pray with you and continue to pray with you. We really will. So call us and let us put our faith together with yours. And I'm offering you my series right now, which is called The Miracles of Jesus Christ. It's 15 parts. It's based on these programs. It is just loaded with insight and revelation into the miraculous healing ministry of Jesus. And I want you to have this because I want you to know the miraculous ministry of Jesus. The Bible tells us Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. These are not just stories from the past. What he did is what he is still doing. And if you know what he did, then it will help you to understand what he wants to do right now. That's why I want you to know the miraculous ministry of Jesus. This series also comes with a study guide that is just remarkable. You will be delighted when you get your study guide. It is pages and pages and pages of revelation. Greek words, history, all the points, all the principles in these programs, much more in the study guide than I can even put into the programs. You will just love it. I'm also offering you my book, which is called Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Why do we need them? Well, first of all, God gave them. And if God gave them, then we must need them. But on a practical level, the gifts of the Holy Spirit bring us the miraculous working of God. Right now I'm teaching on miracles. It's the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the church that bring us the miraculous presence of Jesus. And where we don't have the gifts of the Holy Spirit, there's a whole element of Jesus that is missing. It leaves so much of what we know of Jesus just in the mental realm. But God wants it to leave the mental realm and come into the real realm. He wants us to see his power, to experience his miracles. And it leaves the mental realm and comes into the real realm when the gifts of the Holy Spirit are working among us. That's why I wrote this book, Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Order your copy today. But today we're going to go right to John chapter 5, and we're going to see about a great miracle that happened at the pool of Bethesda. Listen to what the Bible says in John chapter 5, verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is a Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. We're going to spend a few minutes on that, but first let's continue reading. In these, that is in these five porches, lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water, 
Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that condition, Jesus said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? That's the question Jesus is still asking people today. Do you really want to change? Do you really want to get well? Wilt thou be made whole? But let's go back to verse 2. And in verse 2, the Bible says, Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool. You'll notice if you're reading the King James Version, the word market is italicized. It does not appear in the original Greek. The original Greek says by the sheep gate, there was a pool. The word pool is the Greek word kalambrethra. This word kalambrethra describes a pool that has really been developed. It's covered with marble, beautiful frescoes, perhaps mosaics on the wall, on the floor. A beautiful, beautiful place, very sophisticated. This word pool, the Greek word kalambrethra, is the same word which was used to describe the pool of Siloam, which was also a very well-developed, expensive piece of property in the city of Jerusalem. This was a very sophisticated place. And now when we come to John chapter 5, this pool originally was that kind of place. Originally, very well-defined, very cultured, very developed, pool. But by the time that we come to John chapter 5, it's no longer like that. It's a place that has fallen into disrepair. It's fallen into disrepair. Well, originally, the reason it was developed is because the priesthood and the intelligentsia in Jerusalem took this as their gathering place. You could say it was like the country club of the intelligent and the country club of the educated and the rich. It was their place. But over a period of time, the water became unprofitable. Originally, this water was a spring. It had life in it. It was flowing. But the spring began to dry up, and the waters became like dead waters, and they became stagnant. Well, Israel is very hot. You know what happens to stagnant water? Stagnant water in heat becomes disgusting. And this place, over a period of time, became so disgusting that the intelligent, the educated, and the wealthy abandoned it and they went elsewhere, and they just left it. And when they left it, the sick people began to come into this place. And it was the sick people who renamed it and called it Bethesda. That was not the original name of this place. The sick people called it Bethesda. Why did they call it Bethesda? The word Bethesda is a word which means the house of mercy. Stay with me. The house of mercy. Now imagine, this place is packed with sick people, the next verse says a great multitude of sick people. In fact, the Bible says a great multitude of sick people were laying there. That word lay is the Greek word perikemi, which means they were laying all around. They were packed into this place almost like sardines in a can. One sick person next to another sick person next to another sick person. You can hardly move or walk through the place because there are so many sick people laying in this disgusting place. Formerly, it was beautiful, well-developed inhabited by the wealthy, the educated, the intelligentsia of the city, but the water became unprofitable, so they all abandoned it, and the sick people moved in, and they called it Bethesda, the house of mercy, which means the place where mercy is poured out. That's what the sick said about it, the place where mercy is poured out. Why did they say that? I'm going to show you in just a moment. But look at the next verse. The verse says, it had five porches. Oh, by the way, that's very important. Perches, porches surrounded this pool of water. They surrounded the pool of water. All the porches were covered with porticos, colonnades. And so this was a well-covered place. You'll see why that's important in just a moment. But verse 3 says, in these, in these five porches, these five colored colonnades, lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, and notice what they were doing. They were waiting for the moving of the water. Why were they waiting for the moving of the water? There was no movement in this water. The spring in the bottom of this pool had dried up. No water flowed in, no water flowed out. There was no movement of water in this pool. Furthermore, because of the five covered colonnades, which covered much of this place, there wasn't even any wind movement in this place. This water never moved. And yet the Bible says they were all there, all these sick people, Perikamai, laying everywhere, waiting for the movement of 
the water, water, that never moved. No water flowed in, no water flowed out. Because of the colonnades, there wasn't even the movement of wind upon the water. But the next verse explains why they were waiting for the moving of the water. Verse 4, For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. That word troubled means to agitate or to stir. To agitate or to stir. Nothing natural about this kind of movement of water. If it was wind, it would have looked like ripples. But this was an agitation or this was a circular movement of water, which means all of a sudden the water would begin spinning and spinning and spinning, fiercely agitated, spinning round and round and round inside the pool. There was no natural explanation for such movement of water in this particular pool. And the people believed an angel came into the water. And that's what verse 4 said. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and agitated or stirred the waters. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. And when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Well, there's some things that we can assume about this man. We can assume that this sick man first came to this pool in faith. He heard mercy was being poured out in this place. It was Bethesda, the house where mercy is poured out. All the sick were there because they heard there was a miraculous healing touch that occurred when an angel came into the water and stirred the water. And they were all there, each of them wanting to be the first to get into the water so they would be healed. And this man came believing he would be healed 38 years earlier. And now 38 years He's been laying there waiting for a miracle. What do you think his family thought when he said to his family, I'm moving to the pool of Bethesda? They must have said, what in the world are you doing? You're going to go down to that dirty, abandoned pool of water that stinks, stagnant water in this hot weather with all those other sick people that are gathered there. They must have said, what are you doing? But this man had faith. He really believed he would be one of those first into the water to be healed. But now he's been laying there for 38 years, still waiting. In 38 years, he has seen so many miracles. He could write a book on the miracles of Bethesda. He's seen his neighbors healed. He's seen friends healed. He's seen so many miracle healings in this place, but he is still sick. Year after year after year, he's been laying there waiting for his opportunity to receive his miracle. And then one day Jesus came walking into this place. And the Bible says when Jesus saw him lie, well, the man physically was lying down. But Jesus saw beyond this man's physical position. Jesus saw inside this man. And Jesus saw that inwardly this man was laying down. He had given up hope. He had been waiting for 38 years. In fact, the Bible says when Jesus saw him lie and knew he had been a, now a long time in that case, Long time is a Greek word, chronos. It's where we get the word for a chronic condition. This man's case was chronic. He had been lying for a long time physically, spiritually, emotionally. He had given up. He was laying down on the inside. This man just nearly had given up all hope. And Jesus saw him lying physically. And Jesus diagnosed that inwardly he was also lying down. He had given up. And Jesus saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole. The word whole is a Greek word which means whole healthy compared to a sickly condition. Wilt thou be made whole? Do you want to feel better? Do you want to get well? Do you really want to change? Now it seems like that's a strange question to ask a man who's been waiting to be healed for 38 years. But it's a very important question because in 38 years this man had adapted to his circumstances. In a certain way his infirmity had become his identity. He thought like a sick person. He acted like a sick person. All of his friends at the Pool of Bethesda were sick people, so every conversation he had was about his sickness and their sickness. I'm sure they checked with each other every morning to see how they felt, where do they hurt, where do they ache. Sickness became their identity. Not only that, in 38 years, the world has changed. You know, things change. Things changed pretty quickly. In over 38 years, a lot of things changed. Education had changed. 
Technology had changed. Life had changed. And if this man is made well, he may have to get an education. He may have to learn a few things if he gets well. To get a job, he may have to learn a trade. Not only that, in 38 years, this man has not paid his own bills. Somebody else has graciously taken care of him. He's going to have to get a job. He may have to get education. His life is going to change if he's made well. And when Jesus said to this man, wilt thou be made whole? Do you want to be made healthy compared to this sickly condition that you're in right now? It was a very big question. It was the equivalent to saying, do you want me to change radically everything in your life? The truth is, if this man is made whole, he's going to have to get a job. If this man is made whole, he may have to get some education so that he can get a job. If this man is made whole, he's probably going to have to choose some new friends because he can't maintain his old sick friends and be healthy and go out and get a job. He's going to have to choose new friends, develop a new social life. Everything in his life is going to totally, completely change if he is made whole. It wasn't just a matter of feeling better. Everything in his life is about to be changed if Jesus Christ works a miracle in his life. The truth is a lot of people say they want to change. A lot of people say they want a miracle until they understand what it really means. I think of people that are in sick relationships and they say, oh God, change my relationship. However, they've adapted to the sick relationship and even though it's sick, at least they're comfortable there. It's somebody they know. They know how to get along in that relationship even though it's not the best relationship. And when God requires them to change, sometimes they really say, you know what, Lord? Uh, I don't know if I'm willing to do what's required to change this relationship or to change my financial situation, whatever it is, mm, there's a price that comes often with a miracle. There's a price that comes with change. And Jesus said to this man, wilt thou be made whole? He was asking this man, just like he asks each of us, are you absolutely sure this is what you want? Because if I release wholeness into your life, it is going to radically change your life life. Everything will be changed when I release my power in you. And today Jesus is asking you, do you really want to change? And listen to how the man answered Jesus. The impotent man answered, the word impotent is a Greek word as it describes the frail man, very, very sick. The impotent man answered him, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. I think that's funny. Because he immediately said, well, I would change, except I don't have anybody to help me. That's what people often say when God confronts them with a the need to change. They say, well, I would change if he would be different. Well, I would change if she would be different. I would change if there was somebody to help me. And this man answered in the same way. I have no man. Jesus just asked the man, do you want to be made whole? And he immediately said, I have no man to help me. Well, Jesus didn't ask him if he had a helper. Jesus asked him, do you want to be made whole? Just answer the question. Do you want to stay the way you are or do you want to be made well? And he answered, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Now, Jesus asks him a very direct question. Do you want to change? Do you want a miracle? Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to become well again? And the man gives a very confused answer. I've seen this so many times in counseling sessions when I'm talking to people who are troubled in their life. I ask them a direct question. Do you want to change? Do you want your marriage to change? Do you want your finances to change? And their answer is often so convoluted. Well, I would change, but you know, this happened when I was a child and then my father did this and then this happened with my wife and then I had a situation at my job. They're so convoluted in their answer. And very often Jesus just wants a yes or a no. Do you want to change? But Jesus could see the man's heart. And I love that about Jesus. Because when we're confused, when we give a convoluted, confused answer, Jesus can see beyond our confusion and see our heart. And Jesus saw this man's heart. This man was there for 38 years because he wanted to be healed. He may have lost hope, but he came there with faith. And Jesus knew that. And even though the man gave a very confused answer, 
Jesus responded to what he really knew about this man. This man wanted to be made well. So Jesus said to him in verse 8, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. The word rise in Greek is a command. It's a very stern command. Rise, do it now. Jesus released faith. Jesus released power and commanded the man to do something. Now hold on because this is important. He didn't just release power. He required the man to do something. Stay with me. And immediately, verse 9, the man was made whole and picked up his bed and walked, and the same was the Sabbath day. That's important because on the Sabbath day, you're not supposed to do anything heavy. You're not supposed to walk. You're not supposed to work. And here this man is carrying his bed. That's a violation of Sabbath day rules. So the Jews who were there and knew this happened got very offended. And the Bible says in verse 10, The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Can you imagine? This man has been healed after waiting for 38 years, and they can't even see the grace of God has been poured out. They are so religious, all they can see is he's carrying his bed on the Sabbath. And they basically say, What are you doing? This is not a convenient time for you to be healed. Put the bed down. Get back on the bed. How dare you carry your bed? This is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. And I want to tell you that when God works a miracle in your life, everybody around you may not rejoice. They may say, get back on your bed. What do you mean you're changing? What do you mean you're going to be different? Get back on your bed. That's what a religious spirit does. It resists change. But this man was healed. And notice that it says, the man that was made whole. In Greek here, we have the word therapeo. The word therapeo is where we get the word for therapy. Now, I told you to hold on to the fact that Jesus didn't just release power, but he told the man to do something. This leads us to the word therapeo, the word healing. The word healing, therapeo, is the word primarily used in the Gospels to describe the healing ministry of Jesus. It is a healing touch that comes with corresponding actions. In other words, Jesus doesn't just release power. He requires the recipient to do something to participate. If a person has a withered hand, he tells them to stretch forth their hand. If a person's on a bed, he tells them to get up and carry their bed. If a person can't walk, he tells them to use their feet. He releases the power, but requires them to participate. The Greek word therapeo. He therapies them. Jesus therapied this man. And when the man heard the words of Jesus, began to move, picked up his bed, and began to walk, the power of God took root in him. And this man was totally, completely healed by the power of Jesus Christ after waiting for 38 years. His time finally came. And your time is here right now. Jesus wants to work a miracle in your life. And today he's asking you, do you really want to be made whole? We're out of time. I'll be back in just a moment and I'm going to pray for you. How do you read the Gospels? Does Jesus come alive? Do His words and miracles have meaning in your daily life? In the Miracles of Jesus Christ teaching series, Rick Renner transports you to first century Israel so you can see, hear, and experience the miracles and healings of Jesus as you've never known them before. You'll dive deep into the New Testament and see Christ's present day miraculous power with a fresh and new perspective. In this 15-part teaching series, starting at just $24, you'll learn and know the miraculous power of Christ that will forever change your perspective on our wonderful healing Savior. Rick's unique insight and teaching method explores the stories you've always heard from a new perspective and present-day application. You'll never read the Gospels the same after experiencing the Miracles of Jesus Christ teaching series. In addition to the teaching series, you can also receive the book, Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit, available for just $10. In this book, you'll find a deeper understanding of the nine gifts of the Spirit and how you can operate in supernatural power because of the gifts God has given you. When you get this book today, you'll discover how the Holy Spirit can work powerfully in your life and the lives of those around you. Don't miss this special offer, The Miracles of Jesus Christ Teaching Series and or the book, Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Call now, 1-800-742-5593 or go to renner.org to order. Get these two powerful resources today. 
My name is Joel Renner, coming to you right from Moscow, Russia. And I want to tell you about the certain outreaches of our ministry that we do here in Russia. You know, people need help, but more importantly, people need Jesus. And in these outreaches that we provide, people can have both. They can receive help and Jesus. For decades, we have been able to touch millions of lives with the gospel of Christ and the love of God. We've been privileged to do this through broadcasting Christian television programs all over the world, starting churches that are thriving to this day, visiting orphanages with gifts for children and the workers, visiting prisons to minister hope in God's Word, visiting mental institutions to share the freedom that is found in Christ, equipping graduates of our Bible seminary so they can go out and help others, reaching thousands through our Internet Good News Church with Bible teaching and spiritual care. Because of you, we are able to take the gospel of Christ both to our nearby world and to the ends of the earth. Please call 1-800-742-5593 or go to renner.org to make a financial donation so that through your giving, we can continue to make this huge difference in people's lives. Today, we're looking at the healing of the man in the pool of Bethesda. And when the power of God entered into him and really took root, the religious Jews became very offended because he was carrying his bed on the Sabbath day. And listen to what they said to this man in John chapter 5 and verse 10. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day, it is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. And he answered them and said, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. And when the man says in verse 10, the Bible says that he was cured. That word cured is the word therapeo, the Greek word where we get therapy, therapeo. He was therapied by Jesus. Jesus didn't just release power. Jesus required him to do something. Jesus said, pick up your bed and walk. Jesus may require you to do something by faith for healing power to take root in you. He may therapy you. If you've been sick, he may tell you to get up. He may tell you to do something by faith, to use your hand, use your leg, do what you couldn't do, cooperate with the power of God so that it really fixes inside you and you can walk out your miracle. And this man carried his bed. He carried the thing that he laid on. He carried his handicap. He picked it up and walked away with it and never went back to that bed again. He was healed by the power of Jesus Christ. But the good news is, the Jesus of 2,000 years ago is the same Jesus that's working miracles today, and He wants to work a miracle in you, and He wants to do it today. Wow. I'm speaking to you from my series called The Miracles of Jesus Christ, and I'm recommending my book called Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak the healing power of God to my friend, and I say, friend, do you want to be made well? If the answer is yes, receive the healing power of Jesus right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me, and I'll see you in the next program. Thank you for joining Rick Renner today. For more information about Rick Renner Ministries and product resources, visit renner.org and connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.